Hey folks, Phil Zito here and in this episode of BAM TV we are going to be talking about inputs and outputs. So we're going to take a look at some inputs and outputs over here on the control board and then we're going to go and actually look at some logical inputs and outputs. So if you haven't already done it, I encourage you to listen to the podcast episode where we discuss inputs and outputs and that's at buildingautomationmonthly.com forward slash 156. So with that being said, let's dive in. So what are inputs and outputs? Well, if you look, we've got a field controller here, right here, and we have inputs coming into the field controller and we have outputs coming out of the field controller. Now, inputs come into this field controller and they come and get processed and turned into digital signals, hence why we have DDC controllers, direct digital controllers. They take any form of input and they convert it to a digital signal that can be processed by the CPU in the controller. This CPU then, whether we have an application specific controller or a free programmable controller, is going to make decisions that may or may not drive outputs. Now I'm going to zoom in the camera here and we're going to take a greater look at some inputs, but let's first talk about different input types. Over here, we have a regular 1K resistive temperature sensor, an RTD. Now this temperature sensor is going to change its resistance, so there's some metal inside it. And that metal is going to change the amount of resistance as the temperature changes. So what happens is, is in this field controller, it notices that change and then it goes and calculates what the temperature is. We also have relays. So we can have where we have contacts that close or open and we can detect that on our controller. So that would be similar to fan status, that would be similar to damper status, any form of relay where we are getting a contact closure. So um, for example, right with this our actuator over here we have a status on this actuator where a set of contacts close they're driven closed once this actuator gets to a specific position and because of that that gives us status that that actuator has met its specific position that gives us our status of the actuator now over here we have a CO2 sensor. This CO2 sensor can give us four to 20 milliamp or zero to 10. So we've just talked through several different input types. We've talked through a resistive input type. We've talked through a contact or what is called a binary input type or digital input, depending on what language you're familiar with. And then we have talked through our voltage. Now, as far as outputs go, we have a variety of different output types, right? So we have digital outputs where we can provide voltage to drive a relay like we're seeing with these IDEX up here. These are single pole double throw, meaning that you have a coil, a single coil, and you have two contact positions, also known as throws. And when you energize that coil, the contact position is going to change state. So the normally open will go to closed, and the normally closed will go to open. And then we also have voltage outputs that we can drive. So we can drive a four to 20 or a zero to 10 voltage output for this actuator, and we can drive, or four to 20 milliamp, zero to 10 volts, and we can drive that out of our controller. Now, as I said, I'm gonna zoom in and show you how kind of all of this is set. So I'm gonna pause the video and we're gonna take a look. All right. So what we can see is right here, I'm pointing my screwdriver at it, we've got our terminal blocks. So these are where our wires connect to. They get screwed down, you can see right there, the flathead screwdriver will go in and screw it down, even though yes, I have a Phillips head on this, and no, I wouldn't use this to screw down terminal blocks, I'd use a much smaller screwdriver. And then we can see over here, I'm gonna actually zoom in just a little bit more, we can see that we have jumpers. And it's a little hard to make out, but you have a R, V, and I right above the jumper. You can see my finger pointing to it, R, V, and I. R is for resistance, voltage, and I being the symbol for current, so, or amperage. So if we want to take a resistive input, we would switch it right here. If we want to do a voltage input, we would switch it. We would move our jumper. 
and we simply can just go and pull the jumper off and plug it in. And we can see I actually did that on this one right here. Now, here's the thing. Some controllers, you actually have to change the jumpers. Some controllers, it's done in software. Some controllers, it's done with dip switches. Now, if we go up and we look at our outputs, we're gonna have some configurable outputs. And we can see that once again with our configurable outputs. We can switch between voltage, resistance, or sorry, current, voltage, and digital outputs. So we can switch between those. And we can also see a little bit to the left here that we have internal relays. So that has a coil and a set of contacts. So we can actually go and drive that as well. Now, every controller is a little bit different. Some do not have universal outputs, some do. Some do not have configurable inputs, some do. But this is something that's really important for you to understand if you're specifying controls or if you're working with controls. This is one of the biggest areas that I find folks make mistakes in is they go and they forget to set these jumpers and or they don't put it into their control submittals, these jumper settings. And because of this, the jumpers are not set properly when it's field installed and point to point fails. And if you all have been in the field, you know if you fail point to point, that's a big deal because that gets more eyes on you. And we really want to avoid having people dig into every single input and output because that just eats up time on a job and it just makes things no good. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go and look at some different types of inputs on the computer. So we're gonna switch screens and we're gonna go look at the computer and look at logical and physical inputs. I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so now we are looking at a Niagara N4 instance that I have actually installed on our control wall here. And you can see that we are utilizing a BACnet network. We have discovered a device and this device is service one. We can see that that device is actually powered down right now. We can tell that by, we are getting this yellow symbol stale down. That means we aren't actually getting these points, but we're in the wire sheet under this device. And what we're able to see here is that, and let me kind of scroll up and over so this is a little bigger for all of you, but we're able to see several different point types. So we have our physical inputs and outputs. So we can see points that are coming in, points that are coming out, and we can see these points right here being mapped in both on the tree over here as well as on the wire sheet. Now, if I actually click on one of these points, I can see that this is a BACnet analog value. And this is actually a BACnet logical point coming from a physical controller representing the state of that physical point, okay? So what does all that mean to you? Well, we have both logical and physical points. We saw the physical interfaces. We saw the inputs and outputs just a couple seconds ago. Now what we're seeing are the logical representations of those because whenever we transfer points across the network, we are transporting logical points, meaning they don't actually exist. They only exist in software. So remember when I said that we take digital, we take inputs, we convert them to digital signals, and then we represent them inside the controller? Well, we actually do that through points, and points are another way of saying inputs and outputs as well as logical. So you have analog inputs and you have binary inputs. Those are the two physical types of inputs. And we see that represented, right? We see that we've got some what is called Boolean here. So we've got Boolean inputs and outputs, and we have lot or we have numeric inputs and outputs. So numerics are another way of saying analog in this particular software. Depending on the software, they may be called different things. They may be called analog inputs and outputs. They may be called numeric points. It just depends. And then we see we have Boolean, which is another way of saying digital. 
These may be called digital. They may be called Boolean. They're the same thing, numerics and Boolean. And then we see in the palette down here, which is how we add points to the wire sheet here, we see we've got a couple different things. We've got Boolean writables, Boolean non-writables, and we see we have enumerated, which is essentially the same thing as multi-state variables. So logically, we have Boolean or analog, or Boolean or digital rather, numeric or analog, or enumerated or multi-state. And then we have strings, and the reason we would use strings is if we are processing string data, which is textual data. So the rest of these data points are purely ones and zeros. Boolean is two state data, it's either true or false. Numeric is multi-state on a floating range, meaning it could be negative number, positive number, could be a thousand, could be a million, etc. Enumeration is essentially an array. So we take a set number of points and we say, all right, if it's one, it means on. If it's two, it means off. If it's three, it means standby. So that's enumeration. And then string, as I mentioned, is text data. In addition to these actual points we have, we also have what are called constants. And constants are essentially the same thing, but they are Boolean, numeric, enumerated, or string. But these are actual points that we put in there that are not points, these are logical points. So you have constants, and these constants are things that you would put in like set points you don't want people changing. So this should give you an idea of what it looks like inside the software itself. We can see these points right here. Now I'm gonna switch software to the actual software that is running the physical controller. We're gonna look at the physical inputs and we're gonna, remember how I told you resistive inputs um, are scaled based on a pre-scaled chart and that it looks at the resistance and then creates a output based on that? Well, we're gonna see that in just a second. Okay, so now I'm actually inside the controller. We can see our physical input right here. It's an input resistance. And we see right here, we've got a 1K platinum table and that table is converting this resistance to a temperature degrees in Fahrenheit. We can see that we've got a UI1 and UI2. I don't remember if I have these connected or not, but let's go and let's command this to true. Yep, I do still have these connected. So what should happen is, okay, we see our status. And then if I command this to false, we should see the status change again, if I remember correctly. Yep, so we see that this is actually connected to an IDEC relay. So this right here, this writable Boolean is going to these physical outputs and then is writing these outputs, DO2 and DO1. So it's commanding those. And so when I go and actually change its state, we are actually seeing that state change reflected in inputs. So we're seeing our digital inputs and we see our zone temp right here. And then we can see I also have a universal output that I'm running as a zero to 10 volt output. And this output right here is going and driving zero to 10 volts to out the output and is causing that actuator to change state because this is actually connected to an actuator. And then you can see these little backnet points right here that are interrupting my outputs. This is passing through here and you can see me writing to a priority array, which I'm not gonna really cover in this video, but the priority arrays are going and allowing me to create a written value to this point and then we can see that the heating command is once again passing through this priority array. Now I'm going to go back here and we're actually going to watch the state change as I change the output at the controller. So you see it changed the true, and now I'm gonna change it at the controller again, and it should change back to false. 
Now, what we're actually seeing here, we saw the physical point in the controller, and you might have, just depending on how sensitive the mic is and how loud your sound is, you might have heard the relay click in the background, but we're actually seeing the BACnet logical point change state. So this controller is actually interfaced via field trunk, which we'll talk about in the next BAM TV episode, but we see it actually going and changing state and so that is the difference between a physical point and a logical point. All right, folks, if you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments and discussion section below the video. Thanks a ton for watching, and I'll see you all next week in the next BAM TV episode. Thanks a ton. Take care.